Aloha, people, and welcome to Figments, the Power of Imagination, season, whatever, episode, quite a few. I think this is the 37th episode. How'd you like that new graphic with the arrow on target? Uh, they did that and didn't tell me about it, but it's uh, important because on December 6th, on my Figments on Reality, I predicted that Omicron was the end of the pandemic. Guess what? Looks like I was right. Uh, many are saying that, I hope so. Let's pray for that. Let's pray for a, a real uh, return or a real emergence from the pandemic because the normal is going to be different, et cetera. Uh, I'm very excited about today's show. I've got a great friend, a wonderful guy, uh, and we're both connected with an institution that we care a lot, the Daniel K. Inway Asia Pacific Center for Security Studies in Honolulu. Now, full disclosure, if I could, um, yeah, I got to show you the slide that I was actually there, man. I was the, dep the director of DKI APCSS from 2012 to 2017, hard to believe, five years ago. I've got a picture here of me with somebody who's kind of important. Um, he's now the Secretary of State, Secretary Blinken. But what I want to say that I think my guest will agree with is, the most important people who come through there are not the guests, not the distinguished visitors. They're the participants, the alumni. They're quite amazing. Hey, Pete Guma Tau Tau, Rear Admiral retired. Welcome to Figments, the Power of Imagination. You're the director now, man. Yes, I am, Fig. Thank you so much for actually having me in your show. I've always yeah. wanted to be part yeah. of this. And and now I'm here. I've reached the big time. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, I don't know if it's the big time. We're not up to Joe Rogan or cat video numbers, but um, but who cares? It's it's good to have the amazing friends I've had the opportunity to make over my life on and talk about uh, what they do, uh, not what I did. I, I suspect that much of your last four years have been digging skeletons out of the closet and putting oh. them in the ground or, <laughs> from where I left them. Um, but DKI APCSS is a, is a unique and remarkable institution that changes the world. And that's our theme today is uh, changing the world because they do. But before we do that, I've got to let our folks know you that the alumni have been through APCSS during your time and my time are no doubt mm -hmm. connecting. And I say aloha. Uh, to all of you, and mahalo for here Kakua from Tom Patakula. Um, but but for everybody else, tell us about yourself, your roots in Guam, um, and your time in the Navy. Let's start with Guam. Big family, kind of big family, right? Yeah, so uh, thank you for that. And I always start uh, with looking at a person and where they were raised and how they look, because really that kind of shapes their life and their thinking. And uh, Thank you for bringing that up because uh, I am very proud to say that I am from Guam, where America's Day begins. I was mm -hmm. born and raised there and never jumped on a plane, Fig, until I went to the academy. Uh, wow. It was a Pan Am plane. Do you remember Pan Am Airlines? Yeah. yeah. Right. Absolutely. And so, you know, growing up in Guam, it was five boys. My dad was in the Navy. So I'm second generation, right? And mm -hmm. a little known fact when my father was on USS California when Pearl Harbor was attacked. And- No uh, kidding. Yes, sir. And so second generation, five boys. I was the only one of five boys to follow in his footsteps. Uh, my brothers and I grew up in a very loving family. So what you should know about me is that what's centered in my life growing up then that's influenced me throughout my whole life yeah, has been funny. the emphasis by my parents of family and God. And then they also uh, took everything for what it is, never taught us to judge, always strive to make us do uh, the best we can. Uh, nothing is ever given to us. So my dad worked as hard on the fields and our ranch, taught us how to fish, but also taught us how to respect. And it started with the family. And then the last thing that I would say about growing up in Guam is, uh, you know, my mom and, and dad invested uh, in two things with us, education, all mm -hmm. five boys, and love. And here in, in this beautiful island of Hawaii, that's aloha. Taught us to be patient, taught us to be kind, respectful, all the things that you should to treat other people. 
And, and uh, when I think about family, I think about my own family of my wife and I, Anne-Marie, who you've met before. Of course. Married for over 36 years, sir. 36 beautiful years. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, she's also from Guam, but I think uh, her roots are deeper in the Marianas. Her mom is from Saipan. I and, didn't know that yeah. her roots went to Saipan. I've been to Saipan yeah. in 10 years. Saipan and, and, and her dad's from Guam. And uh, wow. in fact, General Brian Fenton yeah. always used to say, hey, Pete, I'm an honorary Saipanese, you know, and uh, what about you? And, and I said, I can't claim that title, Brian. You're uh, right. Yeah, you can. You're married to Saipanese royalty, man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then finally about family that you should know about me yeah. is that Amory and I are very blessed with two awesome kids. They're no longer kids. Kailani yeah, Angeline are. was born here, being in the Navy, we Gone so mm -hmm. many places, but she was born here. And she went eighth grade to 12th grade, graduated at Iolani. And during that time frame is when I met you, Fig. It so is. if you look at time exactly. spans, you know, I stayed here thinking that would be my last tour, but not to be. But Kai is, a, is, a, is an incredible Iolani grad, and she's doing great. And we have our son, Peter Justin, who you also met. Yeah, I played uh, was, golf with Peter. Yeah, he's an awesome young man. But awesome those, man. that's our family, and that's what uh, that's my roots, sir. So our our connection does go back to Indo Paycom, and we're both warfighters. You were a, a, a surface warfare officer in the Navy, commanded at several levels. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about some of the recognition you got for that. I was a fighter pilot, and I still have something in me that's looking for a fight. <laughs> For my wife Alejandra, I am really trying to tamp that down. Okay, I, it's not it's not particularly helpful in the home environment, but there's something about me that makes me want to turn to the merge and go kick somebody's butt. How did people like that wind up at APCSS? And I really think the key is the work you do at the Indo Pacific Command, then Pacific Command, because it's so diverse, so um, important and gives you such an appreciation of the breadth of security. It isn't just, can your ship beat their ship or can my jet beat their jet? And so we'll get back to that. But but I remember those days and you thought you were on your last legs of your Navy career. <laughs> Many of us knew that you weren't. Uh, Dana Atkins, for example, mm. uh, who was your boss is the J3, uh, but we knew you and that you had a lot to offer and what you offered most was heart. Um, so as I read your biography, I didn't know this and it happened before you got Paycom, but before we take a quick break, I do wanna ask about this. In 2001, you received the first Admiral Zumwalt Award for Visionary mm. Leadership. Holy cow, what's mm. that about? Hey, I uh, look, sir, I am not a 10 foot John, you know that. Like I'm only five foot no, ten, no, yeah. and uh, I was very humbled by that, sir. That was, I mean, that was the first award of the Admiral Zoom Award, and many other great mm -hmm. Americans have received that. But that particular leadership award um, comes from the deck plate up. In other words, and I, I didn't even know ah. this. this. This nomination occurred after I left the USS Decatur, uh, one of the ships that I commanded. It was a it was an Arleigh Burke destroyer. If you're not familiar with that name, uh, DDG. Yeah. Right. And so when I left, uh, I was notified by the Bureau that hey, uh, my people back on the ship has saw this award uh, for inspirational leadership and put my name in the hat and then the rest was history. But I, I take no credit for it because that success of that command was really about the shipmates and the crew and the officers and the chiefs. And I was just very blessed, sir. That, that's really their award, not mine, because they really inspired me. I understand that I am, as you may know, I may have told you, I'm writing my memoirs, which <laughs> is going to be a long endeavor. I only have till the end of the year to get it done for a locally imposed deadline, if you will, here in the house. Um, but it, it has given me a lot of time to reflect on what those things mean and what those are. An award like that, Pete, correct me if I'm wrong, is not a popularity contest. No. They're not putting you forward because you're the nicest, smiliest, friendliest, oh. ugliest guy. It's because no. they want to succeed as a team and you help their success. That's how I see it. 
Do you agree? I, I couldn't agree with you more. And in fact, a question that is asked about me, you know, for being in the Navy for 37 years, because I joined in 1976 and I was an enlisted because I went to NAPS. Yep. The question Naval, I Naval uh, well, Academy Preparatory School, for those who don't speak acronym. Thank you. And they always ask me, you know, why did you stay in? It was definitely not for the money, right, Fig? Although I know you, uh, I know you aviators got a bonus, not like oh, whatever, a whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> because you had gravity on your side generally, as long as you kept the wet water on the outside of the boat. And for the record, even though I give aviators, both Navy, Air Force, and anybody else that flies, even Army, I do have a lot of respect for you I, through the years and seeing what you all do up there. I mean, it takes a certain cut of a jib to be crazy enough to go in that cockpit and do what you guys do. But I, I digress. So back to what I was talking about, you know, when people talk about this leadership award, I mean, it makes sense across the board for anyone that stayed in the military, because it is hard. There's a yeah. lot of sacrifice, but we stayed in, I believe that I found as a unifying uh, theme is that, you know, I really gravitated and I grew as a person and I was really inspired. I don't know how many countless times by the spirit of team camaraderie. Mm -hmm. And nobody, everyone's looking after each other. You know how you always talk about the sense about the military sometimes could be the social experimenting ground. You know why? Because it's fertile to be able to accept and absorb these challenges that we have and say, well, I look at you as a, an individual, but you're part of a bigger thing, part of a bigger effort and value. And that's where I think uh, the USS Decatur really, really uh, manifested itself in terms of leadership, right? When you give your people a, 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 a safe environment to do their best, not worry about failing as an individual, mm -hmm. but succeeding as a team, my God, those guys were pumped up. They were, they were mortared up, sir. They were like, wow, sign me up. So, and, uh, so, that's so we learned that at the tactical level, Pete, and then got a chance to come to APCSS and see it on a truly global scale. Let me talk about that after a quick break. So if we could, let me tell you what I'm going to talk about next in two weeks. On uh, February 22nd, 21st, sorry, uh, same bat time, same bat ch channel, 2 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time, later on Vimeo and YouTube. Uh, I'm going to talk about imagining North Korea's motives. Shooting a lot of missiles now, doing a lot of North Korea-like stuff, I'm not sure there's been a good discussion of why. What is the central motivation uh, for their activities? And spoiler alert, here it comes. I believe that the relationship with the United States is central to most things North Korea does. Not the ROK, not China, not sanctions, not nukes. And I'll tell you why then. Hopefully I'll have my good buddy Simon Lee, who, if he's watching this show, just found out I'm going to ask him to be on the Dard U.S. Diplomat. But I'll see you in two weeks for that show. Okay, Pete, back to APCSS. Um, it is, well, let me first disclose, the public will be amazed by this, hidden deep in the heart of Waikiki. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> folks don't notice it, but it's right at the corner of yeah. Kala Kala and Ala Moana and yeah. Yeah. by the Hilton Hawaiian Village. And man, it's the most awesome location ever. <laughs> tell me <laughs> tell me about the, the the edifice, the place, the building a little bit, okay. how you see it. I know how well, I see it. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you, though, you could answer that question better than I do since you preceded me in this awesome, like, yeah. most awesome job in the world as the director of this great institution. But the, the, the center started actually not in the corner of, uh, of Ala Moana and Kalakawa. It actually, uh, the first one was in the Waikiki Trade Center, as you know, exactly. back in 1995. So this... This Austin Center, which is a world-class institution, uh, started about 26 or 26 years ago. And, and it went from that idea of bringing folks together to where we're at now, where we are at 2058 Maluhia. Maluhia in Hawaiian means a haven for peace, which is yeah. perfect for this place. Because if you think about APCSS, if somebody asked me, hey, what is this place? I'll go, first of all, it's a world-class institution. 
So it is at that level. And that this institution aspires a free and, and, and prosperous Indo-Pacific region, promoting uh, transparency, inclusiveness, and just a collaborative way of approach to solving issues. And somebody goes, what? And you go, really? And this is not a think tank. And so no. I tell people, yeah. you it's take, uh, yes, sir, you, it's, it's a do tank. And, and uh, you, you talk about change agents. You, you mentioned the changing the world, but changing in the world from, from a really specific whole of society view. Because here's mm -hmm. the misnomer about uh, APCSS. When you see the word DOD on it, Department of Defense, or even when you get up to the glass door, you remember that thing? The entrance oh, to the center. Well. My badge usually see, worked. <laughs> yeah, you see tourists peering in going, hey, what's in this building? Then they see it's a DOD institution. They almost think, oh, there must be soldiers, airmen, so, uh, Marines. Stealth fighters, uh, in, whatever. But it's not because we bring in to understand this complex security environment, we bring in a whole of society group of professionals, civilian military, to provide their insights in this very complex world. So what you're seeing is a comprehensive view, a comprehensive lens of our world today. And that's very important because, you know, some people will say, well, you're just the military. You see things mm -hmm. a certain way. Well, you're absolutely right. And so the only way we can solve this is pausing for a moment and go, well, this is what we're thinking. What are you thinking? And the last thing I'll say about the center, it's really awesome because when I came in here, they said, hey, sir, the guiding principles about the center and what we live by and what we ask our guests to live by is transparency, mutual respect and inclusion. And if you think of those three words, how powerful are they in, in terms of what? Yeah. People relationships. So it ain't about the each is here. Fig, you know this. Oh, it's not transaction. There's nothing transactional about this place. In fact, you don't even give a degree. You get an yeah. awesome lanyard. You whoo. Whose idea was that? Eight? The relationships. Lanyard was my idea, but but you're right. And I hadn't thought of it in those terms. It, that's the beauty of it. It's not transactional. The U.S. Department of Defense is the host for a couple reasons. One, connection with the command and the, the, the convening power that it has as being uh, related to PACOM. Two, money, frankly, money. <laughs> um, but it's, it also is at the, at the sharpest edge of security, but with access to the soft, softest edge. And, um, if the State Department ran it, and you and I both, have, uh, I know we understand the value, importance, the power of diplomacy, and some mm -hmm. of our great diplomats. But, mm -hmm. but DoD is the right place for it. Um, so I, I have a slide that you provided me. I'm always, I don't usually ask for them, but I got to give you credit, Pete. This is, this is a pretty good slide about what APCSS does. So let's show that. Talk quickly through it. You kind of have already. Is there anything you want to add about the educate, connect, and empower that APCS does in terms of what people might take away from this session who haven't attended a program? Uh, right. Like and, and you know, we could have we could have added even more as a powerful statement, a collage yeah. of interaction between people, because mm -hmm. that's what this is, right? This you bring these professionals together. They're not new at this, right? So you're not looking at somebody trying to get their bachelor's or even understand it. Yeah. They're thick. They're thick in the mud or they're thick in the pond. And if 911 is called, they are the people that will be answering the call for their respective countries of organization. So what you do is you think about these guys, if you want to relate it in Hawaiian terms, these guys are awesome fishermen, okay? Some are good in Marlin, some are good in Mahi Mahi, some are good in Papio, whatever. Yeah. But they come together, they go, hey, here's my lure. Hey, did you know that? And then everybody starts to share and not just build the understanding, but build a network of fishermen, right? Fishermen to do what, as I said, to promote a free and prosperous and collaborative environment that is very inclusive. Could you imagine that? And so if I the thing that I would share, it. Seen it. <laughs> I know, and if, 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 if I could share this, because I know a lot of our alumni are there and I hope you're saying, yeah, you go Pete. You go, Fig. 
because we're talking about you. And yeah, I used to absolutely. always say to this, this center is not the is not the center of gravity, but it is a catalyst, a change agent for practitioners to go, you know what? We're not alone. And you know what, Fig, when when I greet, you know, this is pre pre-COVID, right? When I greet the, the 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 practitioners that come in, I say to them, hey, look, you're all accomplished. You've all moved out in your in your own respective professions. But just know this, and you know this better than I do. If you want to go somewhere fast, go it alone. But if you want to go far, <laughs> what do you do? You look around you. If you want to go far and make it an enduring journey, do it together as a team. And that's what I want to say to all the alumni that are out there. It does matter to leverage the network you've established here. And then there's one more thing I want to say, right? Because there's a big so what to this. This is not just coming over there and high-fiving going, hey, I got a lanyard and I went to APCSS. Nope. There's a big, big expectation that you go out there and help realize this vision we talked about. I have one anecdote, and I know that you got hundreds more than I do. Yeah, this one ago. person, this one person came up to me, and this is a non-attribution world, which means we can't yeah. quote you by name, by person, by country or organization without your permission. So I can't tell this person's name. But this person came up to me right before graduation of a five-week course and said, Director, I just want to let you know, totally unsolicited, Fig, she said, oops, I shouldn't have said she, but the person said, I had a very adverse view of the United States before coming to this course. Very adverse. Mm -hmm. And she goes, but this five weeks turned my view around 180 degrees. And I said, really? And he goes, no, you don't understand. 180 degrees. And he goes, I had to see that myself. I had to feel that myself. I thought you guys were going to, I was going to come here and you were going to feed me with all these policies and the U.S. this and the U.S. that, but you actually yeah, um, listened to us. And, and we all grew collectively. So she goes, I'm going home. I'm a senior policy advisor to my president. And I'm going to bring that inclusive, respectful, transparent attitude that you shared with me here. So thank you very much. So, you know, when you think about yeah. APCSS, it's transformational. It is, and I'm going to hijack the next two or three minutes so that we get to our 30-minute point, <laughs> covering <laughs> what we need to. Um, and I'd like you to close um, with where APCSS is going here in 2022, because you've been through uh, a couple of years of the old normal, a couple of years of pandemic, abnormal, and now we're we're moving. You're moving out. Save that, if you would, Pete. Uh, and let me talk a little bit about what you've said and what I learned in my five years there. And, and I got to say to our alumni, if you're out there, 14,000 of them, 10% of whom became generals and admirals, but half of them were civilians. And they're Supreme Court judges and, mm -hmm. and senior disaster relief officials. And, and they do change the world. And, uh, you know, when I, I had the opportunity to go through my tenure without pandemic, I'd stand up at the beginning and the end of the course and say, I expect you to change the world. That's, that's why you're here. Not for me, not for the United States, but for you and your country. And they did. And I could go on and on, but I won't. Um, so as we get to where you're headed, let me talk about what I took away from it. And then if you could add that into your going forward, what you've taken away so far. Here's what I've taken away from APCSS for my five beautiful years. There. One, the power of aloha, which sounds to a, a steely-eyed killer, which I was, still got that in me. Sounds like baloney, the aloha is so powerful. The idea of welcoming people into your home it, it, broadly and specifically and treating them with res respect. It's incredibly powerful. Dropping pretense. It's all done out of uniform without titles. That's ah, awesome. The um, second thing that I learned um, was that we have so much in common that isn't trivial. It's easy to say, oh, we, we all have a lot in common. K kumbaya. For the security professionals who attend APCSS, God, I hope there are a lot of alumni watch because I got chicken skin remembering you, and I'm married to one. Um, the, 
we have so much in common about doing well for our people, a serious sense of responsibility to our countries, to our duties. Um, and I don't care if you're a prison official in Fiji or a disaster relief official in, because um, I can name that because I'm not really naming anybody in Nepal or Bangladesh uh, or an army colonel in name a country. We are the same because we've chosen to serve something bigger than ourselves. And to be around that in such diversity was beautiful, inspiring, encouraging. And this is kind of a crappy time in the world. And I'm not really encouraged about a lot of stuff, but I think back to that. And I know you're out there and, and it gives me hope. Um, and the last thing I learned uh, there that you know became my top priority, Pete, uh, and, and that is the role of women in, for a variety of reasons, women, peace, and security was my, um, my top priority there. And um, I'm not a politically correct guy, so don't look at me like that, audience. This isn't about allowing something, because the power comes to them whole. And if you don't have half your society represented in the making uh, uh, and implementing a security policy, guess what? You're going to screw up. It's not going to go well. There is a very hard edge, a fighter pilot. I like what works, what doesn't work will kill you into it and involving the whole of society, folks on women in my case, but more generally is what matters most. Holy crap, the engineers are telling us, Pete, that we're almost done. So I gotta, I gotta go to you and apologize for going on and on, but you know what a labor of passion this is. Um, What's next for APCSS? We're going to run a little over talking about CSC, I think. Yeah. What's, what's next is, is where we've been to and, and where we've come uh, ain't going to get us where we're going to go. We need to open up the aperture in terms of dialogue and all that. And so we're using a lot of the hybrid version, but we're also trying to bring back our main batteries to come back. And so in this complex world, Fig, we're coming up with a new course called the Comprehensive Security Cooperation. Cool that's more adaptable and flexible versus just talking about crisis management or terrorism or maritime security or whatever. I'm bringing in different disciplines of practitioners to be able to cross pollinate, give them critical think, yeah. and then ask the question when they leave as a group and a network, what is in the realm of possible? Because my last point is this, okay? The, the, the Indo-Pacific is coined as the region of consequence in the 21st century, mm -hmm. but that's not a given fig. We can really screw this up. <laughs> if, we don't, if we don't talk about being collaborative and inclusive to include women, the role of women, peace and security, we can really screw this up, right? And in the, we're in the red zone, if you ask me. When I say we're in the red zone, mm -hmm. we are the generation and we are about to hand it to the, the next generation to score the touchdown. And what is the touchdown? anything your heart desires, your dreams, your figments, what is yep. in the realm of possible? And that's why I want to close it with this. I really do want to thank everyone out there that have their oars in the water and they're rowing hard and just know you're not alone. And then when you come to the center, you're coming for a haven of peace to be able to build on that momentum that you are all generating and we're here for you. And if you ever want to see fig, Come over here and let me know. I can get Fig over here in the center. He knows anymore. how to find me. Yeah. yeah hey, so Pete, that, that's awesome. We we could go on because uh, because the center's so amazing. Our alumni is so great. Alumni, if you want to connect connect with me, find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever. You know how to find Pete through the through the um, APCSS website and through John Gasner and everybody else who you remember there. Uh, I might have you back maybe in a year or so to talk about CSC and how it went yeah. and about your next figment, which I know about. Hey, folks, I have to close with, and thanks, Pete. Aloha, brother. We got to go. Aloha. Let me close with what would Fig do? Uh, Fig would certainly not do anything different than be the director uh, at APCSS, the Daniel K. Inouye Asia Pacific Center for Security Studies for five years because I've learned so much from all of you. Um, so what would Fig do? Think about that. Look for what we have in common. Commit to public service. 
and be a patriot, but be a thoughtful patriot. So uh, aloha. Uh, I feel good all day uh, having connected with the center and with Pete Gumatautau, Rear Admiral, retired U.S. Navy on figments, the power of imagination. And I will see you in two weeks. Thanks to Think Tech that enables us citizen journalists to bring our message messages, thoughts to you and share them. So aloha. See you in two weeks. Thank you.